Hey there, Tic Tacers. Do you feel like remembering the most popular and terrifying invocation games in our channel? The stairs game, the window game, the card game, the Korean ritual of the elevator game, and the closet game. Are you ready? Let the horror begin. Hey there, Tic Tacers. Ready for a new scary Tuesday? Today, we're making it a bit hard for you to get scared, as we are sending a challenge your way, the startling stairs game. It is a sinister ritual that has been on forums for some time, and we hadn't told you yet about how dangerous it is, but lots of you have insisted, so here it is. However, we definitely do not recommend you to put it into practice, and if you do, please be very careful. For this game, you only need to meet a couple of simple requirements. You can do it at any time of the day, but for it to work better, it's best if you do it at night or with not a lot of light. We can't take with us any object or weapon to protect us, only a cloth or blindfold to cover our eyes so we can't see anything at all. That will keep us safe. And last but not least, obviously we will need a flight of steps. It doesn't really matter how many. To start the ritual, we have to stand in front of the lowest step and say these words aloud. I come before you today, Lucifer. Open the gates of your kingdom for me. You gotta say those words six times to be blessed and be able to trespass the threshold of the game. Then, you have to breathe deeply to gather all your strength and then cover your eyes with a blindfold that keeps you from seeing anything at all around you. And then finally, we step forward and we start going upstairs. We'll count one by one the steps we take until we reach the end. This part is very important. We have to remember the number we've got. Then we'll turn around and go back downstairs. All the steps, again counting one by one until we reach the end. And it's now that we are in a point of no return. If the number of steps we counted on our way down was the same as on our way up, We've done it wrong, and we'll have to try again, starting over from the first step. However, if we have counted one more step, we gotta get ready, because our trip to the underworld is actually starting. We'll go upstairs again, and it will be the same number of steps we counted in the beginning, but then, on our way down, we'll see the number of steps has increased again, and so it will keep increasing in the next descents. The chilling reality is that with every step, we are getting closer and closer to the underworld. We have to walk firmly and never look through the blindfold, whatever happens. We might also hear a noise around, like the cracking of walls, fire whispers, or objects falling down. But still, we have to be calm and we mustn't feel fear. The duration of the trip will depend on the kind of person we are and how many sins we've committed. Depending on the evil in our souls, it will be easier or harder for us to reach the underworld. The descent will get longer and longer, and we will start feeling it's hot around us, as well as a strange and very unpleasant smell. We have to pay no attention to this, and keep walking down. When we reach the bottom, suddenly, we will hear a deep voice that will ask us, What is it that you want? A mysterious entity will appear in front of us to offer or to make anything we desire come true. In that precise moment, we have to stay calm, breathe deeply, and ask, with no fear, for what we want. Once this is done, we'll have to turn back and go upstairs until there is no more left, until we leave the underworld. Only then, and not earlier, we will take the blindfold off and we will breathe calm because the game is over. If you've done it right, whatever you've asked for will become true. But remember, you have to follow to the letter all these instructions and don't let yourself panic. If you don't do it right, if you fall or if you interrupt the ritual in the middle of it, you run the risk of getting trapped in the underworld forever. We are back with a new Scary Tuesday Tic Tacers. This time, we're not going to tell you about any dark legend or yokai. It is something more recent, but no less terrifying. A challenge that is becoming popular on the internet and that we recommend you not to try because it may be the last thing you do. It's the mysterious and creepy window game. Its origin is uncertain. We don't know exactly who started it or why. 
It just started circulating among users of a deep web forum and soon became popular in the community. There are hundreds of testimonials from people who tell how they put it into practice. Some of them lack the ending since the player suddenly disappeared without giving any more signals. We haven't had the nerve to try it, no matter how simple it seems. Anyone can try it in their own room at night. All you need is a window overlooking the outside and some curtains to cover it. We have said that it has to be done at night, but not just any night. It has to be the last one of the month, this is important. When midnight arrives, you must stand in front of your window wide open. As you look out, you will see a familiar panorama, but in complete darkness and stillness. Then, mentally, you have to summon a presence. You must calmly focus, take the time you need and invite it to come. This is how you will draw its attention. Once this is done, make sure to close the window properly, no matter how hot it is, and draw the curtains. And just like every night, go to bed and turn off the light. The gang may not work the first time. In fact, it's normal, it takes a lot of concentration to summon this presence. And written testimonies say it never usually works until at least a sixth attempt. Others had to wait longer, the tenth or twelfth. It doesn't mean that it's not being done well. If it is repeatedly every last night of the month, it will end up working. You will know that you have succeeded if after 30 minutes or an hour of lying down, you begin to hear some noises in the window, as if someone or something is knocking their fingers on the glass. Now, the real game begins. That spirit must never know that you are awake. You have to stay completely still as if you were in deep sleep with your eyes closed. More importantly, you should never look at what is on the other side of the window a few meters from you. The presence will keep insisting and will keep on hitting stronger each time to the point where you think it's going to break the glass. Don't get nervous, it won't happen. And don't worry, your parents or anyone else in the house can't hear the noises. Even if they are really loud noises, only you will be able to hear them. There may come a time when the noises suddenly stop and everything is calm. Don't trust, don't even think about moving a single muscle. It is the entity playing with you, trying to find out if you're really asleep. You have to stay still. Don't fall asleep either, you have to stay awake no matter what. The safest thing is that after a few moments, the blows will sound again, again with more intensity, loudly in your ears. And if you're unlucky enough to wake up and turn around to take an unintended look, the game is over for you. But then, what is the real end? When will we know that it's all over at last? Only when it's dawn and the first rays of sun come out of your window. The entity will be gone and we can't get up and catch our breath again but we can do nothing up to that moment. Not a single one of those who played this game and survived to tell about their experience was able to explain exactly what was on the other side of their window, stalking them. That's something only those who couldn't resist and ended up looking at the entity know. People who lost the game and were never heard of again. The elevator game, the stars game, the window game… Did you think you had seen all the creepy challenges and scary Tuesday Tic Tacers? Not at all. We bring you a new one that will test your strength, the card game. This is one of the simplest rituals that are known, but no less dangerous. As the name implies, for this game we will only need a poker deck, a candle and some salt, and follow the instructions to the T. There are two fundamental points that you must fulfill. First, nobody younger than 10 years old can participate, since, mysteriously, it doesn't work. And second, be very careful with the questions and be polite with the spirits. You never know who you might be talking to. Once we perfectly understand these tips, we will look for a dark room, if possible one without a single hint of light. Then, we get to the center of the room and take the salt. With it, we will form a circle of a good size, enough to sit inside it. After settling in, we will light the candle. 
We must be calm, so it will be easier to contact the other side. If we have followed these steps correctly, there should be no danger to continue with the ritual. This will be the time to take the cards. We will have to shuffle them slowly, focusing on establishing contact. The next step is to take the deck and place it in front of us, on the floor, with the cards face down. We may feel a presence or have the feeling that something or someone is watching us. In that moment, we will ask the question, are you there? If we have followed all the steps correctly, a cold feeling will run through our backs and we will know that the game has started. We will take a few seconds to concentrate and feel the atmosphere around us. And then we will lift the first card from the pile. If it is hard, it means that the answer is affirmative and that the entity is present in the game. If another one comes out, it will mean that we have not succeeded with the invocation and we will have to blow out the candle and try again. <sighs> then we can start asking the presents whatever we want. But remember what we have told you. It is very important to be careful about what we ask and above all, be polite. We don't want to make the presents hungry. After asking the question out loud, we will choose the next card from the deck, which will be the answer of the spirit. If it is hard, it will mean yes, and if it is a spade, it will be a no. On the other hand, a diamond card will be equivalent to maybe, in clubs, um, a don't know by the entity. If at any given time all the answers are of this type, it will mean that we are not being clear with the questions. After satisfying our curiosity, we must thank the spirit for its presence and then blow at the candle. The session will be over. It is very important not to leave the salt circle before finishing the game. Some say that if you do, the presence will accompany you forever. To avoid this, we will always make sure before saying goodbye that our last question has been answered. It seems a safe and simple ritual, but for some strange reason, many of its participants end up addicted to it, always wanting to ask about more and more things. This is the real risk of the card game. The more questions we ask, the less willing to answer the entity will be. And this makes it increasingly difficult to put an end to the session, increasing the risk of getting stuck in it forever. You know that we never encourage you to try these chilling challenges, but if you do, be very careful. Playing with the spirits can be a fascinating experience, but it may not work out as we expect it to. In this scary Tuesday, we're gonna get a bit mystic and playful and we're gonna tell you about the elevator game, a ritual of a Korean origin that takes you to an unknown dimension to contact spirits. If you are the kind of person that has always felt like exploring other dimensions, this is your challenge. You only need to go through a simple procedure to move to a different world, completely dark and spooky. The requirements you need to meet to play this game are quite simple, especially if you live in a city. When you live in the countryside, it gets a bit more difficult. The thing is, you need to be inside a building with an elevator at least 10 floors high. It's important that you are alone in the elevator and it's better if you try it when there is not many people passing by, so you don't have neighbors calling the elevator. If this happens, you have to start over again. So if you are brave enough to play, we recommend that you grab some paper and a pencil to make notes. The steps you need to go through are a bit confusing. The first thing you gotta do to try and get to the other dimension is get on the elevator on the first floor. Then, you have to press the button for the fourth floor. Once the elevator gets there, you have to press the button for the second floor and so go back down. When you are on the second floor, you have to press the button for the sixth floor. You have to wait, and then when you get to the sixth floor, you press the second floor button again. Once there, you have to press the button for the tenth floor. And when you reach the tenth floor, press the button for the fifth floor. Right when you reach the fifth floor, a mysterious woman can get on the elevator and try to draw your attention. According to the rules of the game, we have to ignore her completely. She's in a spirit trying to disorientate the player and take him to a terrible dimension. Now, you have to press floor number one. If at that point the elevator decides to take you to the 10th floor, get ready. That means you've done it all right. 
When the doors of the 10th floor open, you can either get off the elevator or stay inside. If you chose to get out of it and the woman had gone in on the 5th floor, she's gonna ask you, which floor are you going to? Don't answer. Don't look at her. You will know you made it to the other world thanks to a sign and only one sign. The only person there will be you. You'll be in the same building, but in a different dimension. And not all dimensions are the same. You can make it to a peaceful one, but also to a very dangerous one. All the lights will be off, and the only thing you'll be able to see through the windows is a red cross in the distance. Some people say electronic devices such as cell phones or cameras don't work in the other world. Some others say they do. It's not really clear. In order to go back to your right dimension, if you stay inside the elevator, the only thing you have to do is press the button for the first floor. If it doesn't work, keep pressing until it does work. When the elevator reaches the first floor, you have to leave as soon as the doors open. No looking back, no talking. If you choose to get off the elevator on the 10th floor, you have to repeat exactly the same process again from the same elevator. Only that, instead of taking you to the 10th floor, the elevator will leave you on the first floor. Seems simple, huh? The only bad thing is if you get tired of exploring or if you happen to be in danger and need to run away. As we have just told you, you need to take the same steps again. That means starting from the first floor. So, you have to go down the stairs of the other dimension. Down the stairs, 10 floors. Sounds more complicated now, doesn't it? Those who have played this ritual game recommend not doing it under any circumstances. Fear takes control of you. As a consequence, you start getting lost and the fear of not being able to go back to your dimension gets really intense. It is important to stay focused. If you remember Lisa Lamb's video, one of the hypotheses behind her weird behavior and her disappearance was that she was trying to take part in this game. What do you think? Would you dare to go to a different dimension? Are you gonna try? Welcome to a new Scary Tuesday TikTokers. Or rather, a scary ritual, because this time around we bring you a new paranormal talent that will surely make your blood run cold. If you were impressed by the card game, the window game, or the stairs game, then prepare to open a new door into the unknown with the closet game. This is also a creepypasta, even if it doesn't look like it. It's been circulating on the internet for years, but its exact origin is unknown. It was hosted at the Creepypasta wiki for a while, but the page was mysteriously deleted on September 2015. And even if you've never heard about this ritual, we bet you know what is the evil entity that can be summoned through it. It's about the monster in the closet, a creature or a demon that appears in different cultures of the world. In Hispanic countries, the creature is referred to as the man with the bag, the kukui or the jumbi. In North America, it's known as the boogeyman, and in Germany, it's known as the butzeman. When it's not hiding in the closet, it lurks under our beds. It feeds off our fear, and its objective is to punish those who have been naughty, kidnapping them to take them to its dark realm. What gives this being so much power is our natural fear of the dark and the unknown. Surely many of you have endured an entire night unable to sleep, checking that your closet is well closed and alert to everything happening around you. This game or challenge, like the other ones we've talked about, doesn't seem to have a goal or make any sense. As always, we don't recommend that you carry it out at all, as we are not sure about its efficacy. In any case, if you decided to go for it, keep in mind a very important warning. You will need to light a match inside the closet, so make sure there is enough space inside so you don't end up causing a fire. We would also recommend you have at hand a fire extinguisher or a bucket of water, just in case. As you can see, the monster is not the only danger you'll need to look out for. You'll need to carry out this ritual at night. You cannot perform it during the day and your room must be completely dark. Make sure you close your curtains and turn off all of your lights. It's also recommended to disconnect all electronic devices so you can be in a quiet environment without distractions. Make sure that you're completely alone, grab your box of matches and open your closet. Get in and close the door. 
Turn around so your back is facing the wall and sit still and in total silence for two minutes. Then take one of the matches and grab it strongly in front of you. With complete calmness, recite the following conjuration. Show me the light or leave me in the darkness. Wait patiently in silence and listen to your surroundings very closely. If you suddenly start hearing unexplainable whispers, light a match immediately. It's important that you do it on time so you can be safe. If you take too long or don't manage to light your match, that dark being will grab you from the back and will drag you to a never-ending fall in a realm of darkness. Also, make sure to not let the closet get dark again, so light another match if your current one is consumed. Now, if you don't hear anything, it's crucial for you to not turn back, because that can also put you in danger. You will have to wait a little bit more in the dark, very still and in silence, until you make sure you're safe. Whether you heard whispers or not, you will have reached the end of the game, and that's when you have to carefully get out of the closet and close its door. Under no circumstances, turn around, do not look into the closet, and then turn on the lights immediately. In fact, after this ritual, your closet will never be the same again. We suggest that you never look inside it again unless all of your lights are on and it's perfectly bright inside. The ritual could have invoked a dark being that could now be haunting the closet. Many people who completed the game say that later on they perceived a strange activity in their closets, so now they make sure to always have it closed. And the ones who have left his door open at night claim to have seen two red points shining in the darkness, like the eyes of a demon lurking from the inside. <laughs> If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to like it, and if you want to see more Draw My Life videos, subscribe to our channel. See you in the next episode!